Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. My name is Alex Hubbard, uh, the Cybersecurity Mindset, rebranded a little bit. I am a sys admin slash cybersecurity engineer slash CISO consultant. Um, do a lot of things. Got a pretty vast background in the IT field, and. Today I wanted to talk to you about why you want to have a separation of duties when it comes to being a CISO or a VCISO. Um, doesn't really matter, they're both interchangeable. So normally you would have your IT team, so your help desk guys, your sysadmins, your infrastructure guys, your network guys, that sort of thing. Um, those are the guys that are typically making changes or girls or whoever. Uh, those are the people that are normally making the changes uh, to your environment. Well, you want to have some control over that and verify uh, that those changes are being made correctly, they're being made appropriately, and you know they're not going to leave you exposed to um, threats, right? So they're the ones that are going to make the change. Well, how do you how do you verify that? Well, you as the CISO or the VCISO can go in and, first of all, if you have a correct change management policy or program set up, you're the one that's going to be approving those changes and commenting on those changes before those changes even happen, right? So you can go in and after those changes occur, you say, you know, IT comes to you and says, hey, we want to make this change to the firewall. Do you approve it? You talk about it, you approve it. Um, this can be through a ticket, a written document, although in this day and age, a, a ticket or some kind of change management system would be more appropriate, um, especially if you're just going to spin that program up from the ground. Right, so the change will get approved and made, and then you as the CISO can go, or VCISO, can go in and verify that change. Now, this is where the separation of duties comes in, right? Because you don't want to be the person that's approving the change and making the change. You want to verify that the change was done correctly and that there's nothing else that was being done you know, in that firewall change, you know, as our example. Um, you know, that would leave your organization vulnerable. Um, so you don't want to have any admin access to uh, any of the systems, really. The only access that you should have is read-only so that you can go in and verify that a change was made. You don't want to be the person doing the change. Um, you just want to be able to verify that the change was done correctly. Um, and this is, this is a control to verify your IT staff is doing what they're supposed to be doing. So if you have a, policy, a change management policy and program set up, this is, this is typically how it would work, right? And so we have a lot of clients, or I have a lot of clients that, um, you know, when we're onboarding them, they're like, well, okay, do you want access? Do you need access? And, you know, we'll say, yes, I need access, but it's read-only. Now, uh, that, that's all we want. And I sometimes think that uh, they look at us like we have two heads because we're this high level, you know, uh, you know we're these high level people coming in as VCSOs uh, that have a lot of experience under our belt. And then they're like, why, why wouldn't you want admin access? Well, we don't want to be the guys on the keyboard or people on the keyboard making the changes. We need to approve them and verify them. So that's why we keep it separate. Um, on another note, with the same, with that same thought in mind, you know, I have clients that you know they're like, oh, you have a sysadmin background, you're highly technical, you know, my MSP, you know, I can't get them to do X, Y, Z. Can you help? And in the same aspect, well, yes, can I? Yeah, I technically could help. I. That's not my role, though. Unfortunately, for you as a client, you as con you have contracted me as the VC, so. So therefore, I have to keep that separation of duties. But what I can do is I can try and get your MSP in the right, they're guided in the right direction, so that they can uh, come in and make those changes that we need to have made. So uh, it's it's a it's a control piece. Uh, it's to verify that your changes are being made appropriately and that there's oversight to them. And, and this really comes in in uh, industries and organizations that are heavily regulated. Uh, small businesses, mom and pop shops, probably not going to have something like this. It is something I would recommend. Make sure you have, you know, regardless of size of your organization, make sure you have some kind of change management process or policy in place, so that you know you avoid you avoid having the oops, I just clicked this, I don't remember what I did, and now the whole company's down. Um, so having that methodical. Um, 
you know, checks and balances in place to verify that the changes were done appropriately, they were done correctly, and there were no additional changes outside of the requested changes that were made uh, can help dramatically um, keep your you know, organization security tight uh, and make sure things are operating appropriately. Uh, so that's kind of my take on separation of duties and why you have them as a CISO. Um, I, I actually have clients that their CISOs on, that have CISOs on site that want admin access and we have to explain to them that's typically not a thing that a CISO would have. They just have the visibility to verify things are being done correctly. Uh, sometimes that could be even a spot check too. Like uh, I have a lot of clients where I'll log in and just, you know, no change may have been requested, but we go through and just verify and say, well, hey, we noticed this alert in your 365 environment, or we, we noticed this uh, setting in your, you know, uh, vulnerability scanner or something along those lines. Usually we don't go too, too deep, uh, but just to have another set of eyes on it. And again, as a CISO, we don't touch that sort of thing. We just let the client know, um, communicate to their IT staff, and they will be the hands on the keyboard that fixes the problem or makes the change. So uh, we're purely another set of eyes, hands off of a keyboard, and that is kind of how my interpretation of change management and uh, separation of duties work as a CISO or a VCSO. So hopefully that clarified some stuff for you guys and gave you some insight into how that worked. And if you're working with a virtual CISO or a CISO on site and they request administrative access or root access, um, that should send some red flags off to you that something is off. Um, you really shouldn't need that as a CISO. So if you like this content, I'm trying to get more out there. There's a lot of work to this. <laughs> um, you know, like and subscribe below, leave me a comment. There's something you wanna see, something you wanna know. Uh, like I said, I rebranded the channel a little bit. It is the cybersecurity mindset now. Uh, I'm gonna be focusing on uh, cybersecurity, CISO work, VCISO work, sysadmin tasks, security stuff, a little bit of everything uh, because that is what I have my hands in. I have a lot of interests and it's all IT based. So there'll be tutorials, vlogs like this. And if you like it, please subscribe below and give it a, give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching.